I'm back on the road, checking out all the latest news, charges and prices for this June review. And the instant shock concerns the eight Tesla V2 chargers at T-Bay Motorway Services on the M6 in the Lake District. I used these at the end of April in really wintry conditions, but on my visit at the end of May, they were shut down and taped up. Why? Stay tuned for what's going on. And just before we dive into some really positive updates and some serious letdowns, I need to say thank you to all my viewers. I only started this channel on the 14th of March this year, and the first video only got a few dozen views back then. I had no idea if anyone really wanted to watch any, or how many would. And it's fantastic! I've just reached over 1,100 subscribers, and over 100,000 views, and the channel is growing at a remarkable pace. Those figures mean I'm now able to take a small revenue from the adverts already shown on my channel. And just how small that revenue is, is shown right here. But even that is more than enough for a full 10% to 90% charge at home on my off-peak rates, so allowing me to travel further afield without it costing me a fortune out of my ever-dwindling bank account. Well, I really, really tried. Regular viewers will know that I'm not a fan of Shell Recharge. They're the most expensive in the country for a mainstream charging network, 79p for rapid and 85p for ultra rapid, and that remains unchanged. That's if anyone can say a 175 kilowatt charger is ultra rapid without falling about laughing. Their locations are normally on a smelly, busy petrol forecourt with very slow 50 kilowatt chargers and very, very limited facilities. Well, for this month, I really tried to find just one Shell Recharge site locally, which was a rapid charger above 50 kilowatts and located at a more pleasant site. I found one, advertised on their Shell map, rated at 150 kilowatts quite near me. But a visit there found a 75 kilowatt dual bay charger, each bay seemingly only getting 75 kilowatts, and it was not labelled Shell, but EV, IVI, uh, however they say it. They advertise themselves as a new growing charging network, but as yet, they're very small and mostly AC chargers. They will feature next month, but this is not a Shell charger. Well, I failed. Are they serious? Do they really expect us to sit on a petrol forecourt for an hour? Is this just for their shareholders, so they can claim to be doing their best for the planet? Is it just greenwashing the general public? They make their money from oil exploration and refined products. A loss of a few thousand pounds on each charger is nothing to them compared to their £9.6 billion record profit for the first quarter this year. Please make your mind up, Shell. Get with it or pack it in. What you're doing is not working. Instavolt have been incredibly active this year. The Twitter channel is very active, with regular reports of new installations seemingly daily, and I've visited a few of them. They really are trying to live up to their own title of the fastest growing charging network in the UK. The sites are really good, they're well located, plenty of space well marked. But why just two chargers? They upgraded to 32 chargers in Banbury recently, a fantastic effort. But since then, it's just pairs of 50 or 60 kilowatts. Their prices are a hefty 75p at all chargers. While this makes it easy to understand, it means that 50 kilowatts, 150s and anything above that are all the same price. Their reliability is also improving. Certainly the chargers are better. The main problem always seems to be the contactless, forcing you to register and download their app, even having to deposit a balance into your account. Everyone else, everywhere else, gets contactless working reliably and quickly. Osprey have really been making headlines on Twitter. We are one of the UK's largest, highest rated, fastest growing rapid electric vehicle charging networks in the UK, they claim. Their Twitter account is very active and provides regular reports. And certainly when I've spoken to people using Osprey, they've all had good comments and experiences. Price is a very hefty 79 pence, but reliability is good and speeds are high, with most chargers now in the 150 kilowatt range 
and larger ones being installed but not yet common. If you can bear the price, you generally get an otherwise good experience here. Fastnet seems to be growed in last month, but nothing new shows up as operational, apart from a lot of installations in Europe. Well, not surprising for a German-based company. Price is a very reasonable 69p per kilowatt hour with contactless and no membership, but that drops by 30% to 48p if you choose to become a member and pay £9.99 a month. Well, if you're an average mileage motorist or charge up two or three times a month, my simple math says this is a no-brainer. Average motorist, four miles per kilowatt hour, 8,000 miles, that's 2,000 kilowatt hours a year, 20 pence saving on each kilowatt hour, that's £400 a year or 33 a month, and it costs you 9 99 premium. Duh. Great site layouts, fabulous striking canopy and company colours for rain or sun protection. Charges are mainly 300 kilowatts with twin bays, meaning if you're alone, you'll get up to 300 kilowatt if your car can take it, or if both bays are in use, you'll still get a very healthy 150 kilowatts. That's a good speed. The Twitter feed is relatively quiet, but the website is really good and informative and includes an easy to use charger speed guide. Enter your EV model and make, and they tell you the maximum you can get. Really helpful. Beats trying to trawl through the manufacturer's spec sheets and guess. See if there's one nearby you. GridServe offer a, pic a mixed picture this month. They've just increased prices from 66p for rapid and 68 for ultra rapid to a standard rate of 69p for rapid and ultra rapid. Still a really good rate, very competitive, when the average seems now to be hovering nearer the 75p mark. It's beaten only by Fastnet and Tesla. But GridServe do not offer any membership. New charges are being installed at a really good rate, while also losing some charges to the likes of Apple Green, and more on them later. The power is mainly 350 kilowatts, but they are also rolling out low power shared chargers. That I generally don't like. Six brand new 300 kilowatt chargers being installed at T Bay northbound services on the M6, each with twin bays. While they will be fitted any day now, they are not due to be online before the end of September. The reason for this delay affects all chargers throughout the country, <clears throat> and I go into more detail a bit later. These shared chargers I love. Fastened share at 300 kilowatt chargers, but GridServe are now rolling out 60 kilowatt chargers shared. While in theory more people can charge, each might only get 30 kilowatts, so it will take twice as long. Not ideal. I'll keep an eye on this to see if it's a benefit or a disaster. Before we leap into Tesla, I am absolutely delighted to announce that as a result of the incredible growth over the past three months, that I'm launching a Patreon membership. It costs me money to run the channel, as it involves a good deal of driving, and the McDonald's muffins don't come free. Entry level begins at just £3, and will be for those who want to support the channel financially. Other membership levels introduce additional benefits, such as behind-the-scenes content, EV charging guide, a channel shout-out, and an invitation to join me on a number of video shoots throughout the year. Who knows? You might appear in one of our videos. Full details are available at patreon.com forward slash Dave Takes It On. Ionity is a tale of two cities. Absolutely no new, new charges installed in the UK, plenty in Europe, according to their website and Twitter, but they have just introduced a membership called Ionti Passport that is live now and looks really interesting. 74 pence per kilowatt hour is above normal price, but with the membership, it's 56 pence for a monthly fee of £10.99. They may not have many charges, but most of them are now 350 kilowatt and multiple units per location. Again, an average motorist should find the membership package very, very attractive. And this split between an average cost of 75 pence per kilowatt hour for non-membership and around 50 pence or below with membership for the likes of BP Pulse, Fastnet and now Ionity opens up the market. Tie that with the deal that Tesla's just done with Ford and GM. No, not the plug share, that, that's already here. But software sharing and full access to all Tesla superchargers 
and their facilities, and I see a distinct split in the charging market. More on that later. T-Bay services in the Lake District had eight V2 chargers, each rated at 150 kilowatts, but they shared that power between two bays, so at quiet times, each one can get 150 kilowatts, but when full, each only gets 75 kilowatts. Better than sharing 60 kilowatts like we grid serve, but not ideal and queues were common. I met Nabil, the CEO of the T-Bay services, and amongst many topics discussed, I was informed that T-Bay had reached the end of its power capability. The incoming cables and distribution stations were totally maxed out and cannot carry any more power. Nabil told me that their plans to install a large solar farm on the land surrounding the services to power the chargers and the services cannot go ahead as the cable and switchgear cannot cope. Similarly, Tesla could not build any additional chargers to relieve queues at peak times. After careful calculations and consultations, they installed 12 brand new V3 250 kilowatt chargers just 20 feet away. Only possible if the existing eight are shut down. Now I suspect the 12 chargers are probably power limited at some point in the, if it's full occupancy, but this is a fantastic improvement. And when I was there, it was busy, the throughput was rapid, and there was no evidence of throttling. Well, this is becoming a problem not just in the Lake District. Grid connections are taking their time, dramatically slowing down the growth of the charging network. I am producing a video series for a release very soon, giving far more detail, alerting you to the massive changes that are already happening and what the future might hold for us. Subscribe so you'll be notified, but the good news is that the old V2s have not been removed, merely shut down and covered over. I hope they stay, because when the power issue is finally resolved, which, which it will be, they could then simply be uncovered, checked, cleaned, and be put back into action on additional eight charges. No major changes on Tesla prices, which hover around the 40p mark off peak, but new superchargers are opening, others are planned and announced, and the overall picture is of rapid growth. Hands down winner, 12, 18 or 24 base superchargers, each with V3 250 kilowatt chargers, not shared, and a 40p a kilowatt hour. Does it get any better? Apple Green, in comparison, comp continues to totally baffle me. They have no EV charging app for mobile phones. They have no EV charging map on their website, nor any pricing, nor any details of charges. Just loads of promotion and loads of artists' impressions. They've already acquired charges by simply acquiring the motorway services which contain existing units, often grid serve, but up north, I have found that none have been rebranded, none have been replaced, and none have been installed fresh. Maybe it's just me up here. If you have any info on Apple Green, please let me know. I am baffled. Until then, nothing to report. BP Pulse almost falls into the Shell Recharge scenario. Little bit of activity on Twitter, much better website, but not much else has changed. The pricing is almost identical to Shell, 79p for rapid charging, but they do offer membership, which reduces that to 63p for 785 a month. And the first six months are effectively free, as they pay a £9 credit per month for five months into your account. 63 pence for membership is no longer that attractive, but much, much better than 79p. Genie Point once again plod on in the background. 50 kilowatt chargers, usually just one, occasionally two. 79 pence per kilowatt hour means they're pretty much redundant when 69p 300 and 350 kilowatt chargers are now appearing, and those are under 50p with membership deals. These single AC chargers will just wither away. At this price, they are no longer worth the hassle of plugging in while you shop and you'd have to be desperate to voluntarily go there to charge. Wave goodbye, they won't last long. Podpoint is another with a very similar story and very similar outcome. 
Again, why plug in for hours at a local retail park to a 7 kilowatt AC charger at 79p when you can just go elsewhere, pay less and charge quicker? It may have made sense once when they were free, or 28p, but that market has gone, and there is no market for 7 kilowatt at 79p. They just haven't spotted it yet. MFG continues a lot like Shell. Want to be the biggest? Announcement of dedicated hubs. No change in price at 79p, really expensive. And their aim? To electrify their entire forecourt network. More charges on smelly forecourts. Might have to think again, MFG. Enough said. It's a general trend in the UK that the national grid is the bottleneck in connecting new charges when they are installed and ready for use. Delays are now normal. I am preparing a video series on this topic and others following my meeting with Nabil. T-Bay is definitely a charging location to watch as their plans are indeed amazing. In the meantime, there might be a light at the end of the tunnel. Our government is discussing easing up on the current system where the national grid or its distribution branch supplies the cables and switchgear plus makes the connection and instead allow the EV charging networks or their installation companies to supply and install the cables and switchgear themselves and possibly also make the final connection. Very much needed, the charging networks will and can move very much faster than the national grid. We need to get things moving. Get in touch with your local MP. Now, there are stragglers not so far mentioned, such as ChargePoint and a myriad of other smaller networks offering hundreds or thousands of low-power AC chargers. I am investigating these, and there will be a follow-up video on these. But again, if they all charge 60p or more, why bother? I suspect these will begin to slowly grind to a halt, then wither away before finally disappearing in a few years' time. With charging times now down to 15 minutes for a 20% to 80% charge once a week, their use is now redundant. If I couldn't charge at home, I would definitely look at owning a Tesla and using superchargers at 40p. Or a non-Tesla. I'd then join somewhere as a member, charge once a week, always out of peak hours, I'd just sit back and relax on a midweek evening, maybe around 7 or 8 o'clock, in a Starbucks or Costa, for the 15 to 30 minutes your car will take. Remember, you do not need 100% full charge every single time. Think back to your petrol days. You didn't fill right to the top every single time. Most often, you put in 20 or 30 pound just to get you through the week, and only filled up for a long journey. Go back to that, it works. Works for EVs too. Charge to 60 or 70% for normal driving, more only for a long trip. Now this frees up the chargers instead of building up queues while a few inconsiderate cars top up to absolutely 100% at an agonizing crawl. I personally have visited a large number of chargers from all the networks over the last three months, and I honestly state I have never queued. Not once. I've also found more chargers faulty and not working than I did in the previous four years using Tesla's superchargers almost exclusively. The situation is extremely dynamic, and I will be following up these findings over the next few weeks, digging deeper. Thanks for watching right to the end. Please subscribe, hit the like button and let me know your thoughts. I really do welcome your comments. I'm Dave.